Well, hello, Stampers. It's the Pampered Stamper, and welcome to the Global Monthly Video Hop. This month's theme is techniques, so all of the demonstrators around the world that are participating in this hop are going to be showing you different techniques. My name is Jackie Vandersar Boot, and I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in both Canada and in Europe. I'm a Canadian who married a Dutchman, and so I'm keeping two businesses going, and uh, I'm really excited about that. So I hope that you choose me as your demonstrator, but even more, I hope that you're inspired by this technique. Let me show you what inspired me. So this card I thought was really, really cool, and I thought, how did they get that background? It is not a background stamp, and it hasn't been done in ink. So the middle part is timeless arrangements, and I could have used that. However, I just sold my set, so I don't have it anymore. It is a fantastic set. I've done a whole series of it on YouTube, so if you haven't seen that, just do a search on my channel or message me, and I'll send you the link. But I do have a different one that I'm going to use, and I bought the stencils just for that. So here they are. They are actually called Four Square Decorative Masks, and it's item number 161285. So before we get started with that, make sure that you look in the description underneath here. There's a little word, show more, click on that, and then you will see the links for all the other people participating in the hop. Make sure you go and see them and leave them some kind words. So here we have, there was four of them. You know what, I'm going to move my grid paper for a minute so that you can see better. So here's one, two, three. This is the one used on that card, and then there's this one. So I'm going to do different things with these masks, so stay with me. The first one is going to be the first technique. So I'm going to go like so, and I'm going to do it on old olive. So I've got an old olive card base, and I'm just going to use my Versamark to give it a little fold. And then I'm going to put this over top. And if I line up that edge with here, then it's straight. Then I'm going to take my Versamark pad, and direct the paper so I'm going to hold on to it and I'm going to squish really hard so that the Versamark goes in between the openings then it's not going to be perfect and that's okay the idea is for it to look artistic and we'll see how it works so the thing with the Versamark is you can't really see it it's a clear watermark ink so Turn it upside down. The trick with Versamark is make sure that you always have it well inked. There's a Versamark refill. If your Versamark pad isn't sticky, you won't be able to emboss very well. So now I'm going to take this off. And yes, you can see a pattern here. So I'm going to take clear embossing powder. And I'm going to get our little embossing additions tray. And pour this on. I'm sorry if you hear a screaming child in the background. It is not a grandchild. It is a neighbor across the street. But apparently the noise doesn't carry it through to my video, so that's good. So now I'm going to, this is clear embossing powder. I'm just going to hold it and flick from the back, nice and hard. And that way all the excess goes away. Now I can hold this like so with my tweezers so that I don't burn myself. Now I'm going to take my heat gun and just put it on and you'll watch it just melt. So there it goes. You can see how it gets darker. It becomes tone on tone. It's just clear. So I slowly move my heat gun. I don't want to see any powdery residue. So these tweezers are really nice. I don't burn my fingers. And then I'm just going to look to make sure I don't have any powdery bits. I think maybe this corner yet. 
Ja. Okay, it looks. There. You don't want it to look dull either, you want it to be shiny. So I always kind of angle my card like this to make sure I can see that it's all shiny because if it's not melted, then the powder will rub off and then you won't have a nice look. So that's the one look. That's We'll finish this card later. So I'm going to turn this into a beautiful card. This is the one I'm going to use to make the card. But we're going to do some other things. I have white, a piece of white, and I'm going to use the same one, except I'm going to use a blending brush. And I'm going to use Garden Green, if I can find it. I have so many things here. Oh, yeah, it's right here. I'm more organized than I thought. I should move it out of this way. So I have an old Garden Green ink pad here. And if you don't like, if you don't feel comfortable holding onto this with your fingers, you could tape it down with um, painter's tape. And I'm just going to do this. Now, my mask is a little bit... Um, it's giving me a little bit of resistance because of the Versamark on there. I didn't take the time to wash it, but I will wash it with some soap, like Dawn soap or something. But I wanted to see what this would look like if I layer it with another mask. So what, what these things are great for is that you can make your own pattern paper. So here we have it. That looks good. It looks good just like that. Nice and springy, just beautiful. Look at the difference. So this is the heat embossed and this is sponged. But I thought it might be fun to take this one. Or was it this one? No, it wasn't. Well, I could do it. Yeah, it was this one. But I'm not sure how perfectly it matches up. Well, we're going to see. I don't think it's perfect and I don't know if it's intended to do this, but I thought it would be fun to try. So now we're going to take some early espresso ink. And I think I can dauber. Hold on. And we're gonna see what happens. The nice thing about stencils is that you can play, your paper has two sides, so you can move it. Oh, I moved it a little bit. And um, if you don't like your design, you can turn it around and try it on the other side. But it reminds me of being a kid, and that's always a good thing. You know? I have to share a photo later on my Facebook page or on Instagram. I was at a children's place. It's um, Sometimes I take the grandkids now. I'm living with them, and it's early on. Like Early on is a government program for parents and kids. And they had a big poster about art and how important it is. And look at that. How cool is that? Now, it looks almost like I have a line there, but maybe I'm just seeing that. But that looks really neat, too. So you can layer the masks. So that's fun. Now let's try this one. And I'll try it on very vanilla. Oh, yeah, I wanted to do something else. A different thing that you can do is you can take a spritzer. Now, I have no alcohol. You would want, well, I mean, I have alcohol to drink, but you want a 90% or above alcohol, rubbing alcohol, or isopropyl alcohol. I don't have any, so I thought I'm going to try it with water. And I'm just going to use, I've got some early espresso here. I'm not going to use this one just yet. And I mixed it with some shimmer ink. This is called Champagne Mist. I have inky fingers, I definitely do. And I poured a little bit in here. And now we're going to use the mask, this mask, and it's just with water. So it's not as good as alcohol because the water dry, does takes longer to dry and it absorbs into your cardstock. But let's see what happens. I'm spritzing it. I'm almost out of water, I think. We'll see how much made it through the mask. I'm almost tempted to rub it across, but I shouldn't do that. So let's take a look and see what happens. There. And when it dries, I could use my heat tool. 
but it's got a shimmer to it. And it will just be a very subtle background. So I'm just going to get my heat gun. Now, if I had used um, the alcohol, it would have dried instantly just about. So this looks pretty cool too. So you can use a mist, a spritz. Isn't that neat? This is just water. And that champagne mist, I have a couple. So if you're local to Chatham, I could sell you one. An all-purpose ink, 74, champagne mist. So it, it, you can spray it with alcohol over your entire Christmas card and you get this gorgeous shimmer over the whole thing. So that's really neat too. So that's number two way to use it. Now we're going to do um, just with some ink. And I think I'm going to do espresso. And then the last thing that we're going to do, uh, you see this doesn't look like I thought it would, which is interesting. And we're going to use embossing paste on the last one. I've done a lot of embossing paste cards, but not with these, this set. So I'm curious as to what it's going to look like. The neat thing is, well, I'll do something different with the embossing paste. There's a little trick with, with these stencils that you can do that I have forgotten to show you so far. So, so techniques don't have to be complicated, but a simple tool like this is... Um, and if you don't have blending brushes, you can use a sponge. You can use a sponge dauber. Okay. Shall we have a look and see what this is going to look like? Are you ready? Look at that. How nice is that? Okay. Last one. We haven't used this one yet. See, so I'm going to show you the other side. Let's move that out of the way. The other side. Oh, this is, we did use this one with the glimmer paste. Oh, I need to dry it off. Let's see. Okay. I'm hoping that was good enough. I have been sticking, oh, let's do red. Let's do a red one. You can change up, you can wash these when you're done with them and they will come clean. I'm just gonna get a different one so I can do a red for you. Okay, so I have a red. Just to let this sticks out a little bit more. Oh, see, so now it slid. What do I do? It moved. So what I do is I just go back, do like a puzzle piece and slide it into position. There. Now it's just about where I need it to be. There. Okay. Now I can keep going. Yeah, maybe I'll show you the technique with this one. So what I'm doing is, let's see. Huh. We'll see what I did. I don't know if I messed up just there, if I just missed a few squares. Okay, are you ready? Look at that. Oh yeah, I did mess up. Look, then you get a hound's tooth pattern. That's kind of cool too. But I purposely left a corner blank so that I can stamp there. So definitely a fun thing to do. Okay, the last thing before we make a card is I want to use embossing paste. So our embossing paste comes in a bag like this. And then save this bag. Do not throw it out. And then carefully peel off this. See, and it's, it has settled. It's about two thirds full. I'm just going to close up my ink pad. And then the other thing you need is palette knives or palette knives. Palette or palette. A palette is like your, like your, in your mouth. The inside of your mouth, the roof of your mouth is your palette. So I think this is palette. I'm going to take the longer skinny one and I'm going to give it a stir. It's just, if you ever buy Cool Whip, you have to stir it before you use it. So that's the same thing with this. You just want to stir it up, make it fluffy, make it so that it's 
easy to spread. Okay. There we go. I should grab another thing that you want is an, um, a silicone mat to protect your, your work surface. Okay, so I have my silicone mat. I have a piece of very vanilla. And I want to use this pretty one. I'm going to go up a little bit higher. And then I just scoop out a bunch of stuff about like this, like lots. And then spread it nice and thinly. Okay. Spread it all the way across. Nice, even pressure. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I want to leave a bit of a ragged edge on my corner. I want to leave this open. And I'm just going to put this on the edge and then go a little bit more here. The thinner you make your embossing paste, the quicker it will dry. I would say it takes about an hour. Okay, so now I'm scraping this off. And then I'm carefully going to lift this off. Look how nice that is. So the important thing is, I'm going to zoom in. Let's see so that you can see. This gives you a raised textured background. And it's so lovely. I did get some stuff in here. So I don't know if I can put a sentiment here. I'm going to try. I could also, I'm just going to lay this on top. I could scrape this off a little bit. There could also use a razor to do this, but you want to do it right away. So now I can still stamp something. Now the right away what you want to do is I'm going to take my palette knife, my palette knife, and my mask, and my silicone mat, and I'm going to wash them with warm water so that they're clean. Because if it dries, it gets really hard and it's difficult to clean. I haven't tried it. If it afterwards, you can soften it again with hot water, but the best thing is just clean it right away. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's review what we've done. So here is the, with the shimmer. So it's got, and that's just with water, okay? So this is definitely a subpar thing and it's still beautiful. Then we have the double layered mask. So we did two over top of each other. Then we did the clear embossing, which was really cool. And then we did the embossing paste. Like, isn't that just amazing? It reminds me of all those old, beautiful buildings in Europe, those, those ceilings and the wallpaper. And then this one, and I don't know, this one might work too. Like, and I messed up over here, but that's okay. Bit of a hound's tooth look. Um, now we are going to finish off our card. I, I thought there was another one, but I can't think straight. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to go back to this card and we're going to combine it with the apple harvest. So I'm just going to zoom out. I have three bun three sets of these left. Stamp set the dies and a tutorial. And I have colored some already. So I've stamped that. The greatest gift is a good friend. And then I stamped this and I colored it with my blends. And I thought, look how nice that looks. This thing also, take a look at how pretty they are. So there's also a branch die, lots of flowers and leaves. Big open dies to cut out the apples and a single apple, and then look, it makes those flowers. Isn't that just so pretty? So let's take a peek. We're going to pop up these apples. And whew, my dimensionals are missing in my pile. Okay, so I found my dimensionals. We're gonna put a few on the back. I colored this with old olive and cherry cobbler and maybe, and some um, probably soft suede at the time. We could use pecan pie now. That would look nice. And I'm just going to do it a little bit like so. And then I'm not sure yet. I want to see if I can add a bow. So I'm going to take a piece of linen thread that's about as long as my arm. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is triple it, I think. So that's kind of tricky. So three lengths that are about the same. 
and then make a bow. Pull the loops a little bit so that they're a bit different. I think I'll do that for her too. There. And then, so that was just three strands, and I can trim it up. That one's a little bit shorter. There we go. So now we've got a nice, messy linen bow, linen thread bow. And now I have to decide where I want to put them. I think it's going to go there. Okay, blue dots, where are you hiding? Uncover the last blue dot, press your bow onto it, and then I'm gonna use my tweezers and I'll knot. There, with my fingers. Press it there, and then we're gonna go. I'm going to put two dimensionals, and then the rest is gonna overlap our apples. This reminds me a little bit of a trellis, so I kind of like that idea. You could add some adhesive on the far end, but you don't have to. The greatest gift is a good friend. Isn't that so nice? So great to have a background, a nice little bit of shine to it. If you wanted to step it up, you could have done this on a layer and then matted it, but I just really love the look of this. So I hope that you have a super day. Don't forget to check out the other people in the blog hop. And if you liked my video, please leave a comment and give me a thumbs up and share on, uh, if you hit the share button, you can share to Facebook or Pinterest, and that would be really helpful. I appreciate you. Thank you for being a part of my Stampin' Up! community. Have a super day. Bye.